Hello, Jermaine here. In the last video, we added validation to our forms. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate a Firebase um, database um, in our application. As you can see, um, when we add a new item and then we reload the page, um, the item disappears, which is because um, we're storing all of these in memory. So using a Firebase database at least means that we can persist um, the bookmarks we add and then on page reload, we'll just um, make a call to Firebase and retrieve them. So let's begin. Let's create a service that will handle speaking to our Firebase database and also instantiating um, each of these bookmarks. So in the source directory, I'll create a new folder. I'll call it services and then in there I'll add a new file called bookmark service dot dot I'll start by importing some libraries that we're going to need so I'll pull in the dot async library we'll import our bookmark model and then what we'll do is we'll create our service we also need to import our angular package because this then allows us to annotate our service with a injectable annotation. And then what we'll do in our bookmark service is we'll just define one method for now. It'll be of type future. It'll return a list of bookmarks and then we'll call it get bookmarks. So this will return a delayed future and we'll do future dot delayed just to mimic it taking a length of time to retrieve bookmark so we'll delay it for let's just say one second and then after one second we will return a list of bookmarks and we'll retrieve that list from our bookmark scaffold component i'll cut this out of this file and then i will paste it in here save this and now there should be no bookmarks so let's just test that we're able to import this in our scaffold component so if we come up here and then we import services our bookmark service and then what we need to do is to define a provider for our component so we define a providers parameter we'll pass in an array which takes in a class provider and then in there we'll pass in our bookmark service that way okay so which means that in our bookmark scaffold component we need to define our constructor which takes in essentially our service so in order to use this service we need to inject it into our class essentially so what we'll do here is declare a final property which will be of type bookmark service and then we'll call it bm service which means this flags up red now because we need to import it so we'll just do this dot underscore bm service so what happens is that angular has got tooling that will evaluate this instance variable and it sees that we need this bm service and it will look in the list of providers for this bookmark service so this will inject it automatically for us which means that a new instance of bookmark service will be assigned to underscore bm service okay so the next thing we need to do is to load our bookmarks when our scaffolding component is initialized and the way we do that is um, we implement one of angular's um, lifecycle methods and this lifecycle method is called on init and then we have to implement that so we use the override annotation and then this signature is future of type null and it's called ng on init use the async keyword and then what we'll do is our bookmarks will be the result of our bm service list of bookmarks and of course we need to get rid of the final keyword so let's save this and test it out so if i save this see what happens okay there we go so after one second all the bookmarks are loading and then we'll add a loading indicator for our bookmarks because at the moment when the page loads it says no added bookmarks then it shows up so ideally we should have a either a spinning icon or have a message just saying loading bookmarks from database or something like that so we'll do that now um, it's pretty straightforward so we'll add a boolean and we'll say it's loading and we'll set that to 
true by default and then after the bookmarks are loaded we'll set it to false so i'll save this shouldn't affect anything um, on here and then we'll come back to our template then we'll scroll up here to where it says no bookmarks added and we will we'll add a ng if condition here so we want to show this message if it's not loading else if we're querying the database then we want to have a message that says loading bookmarks from database so let's check this out loading bookmarks from database okay cool so that way if we delete each of these now it should say no bookmarks added to save us replicating these um, tags for each of our conditions angular um, does allow us to use the template tag so we can do this instead we can use a template tag and what that means is that we can add this condition to it in if and then we'll have this text and then we'll replicate this template tag if it's loading is set to true we want to load our bookmarks from the database so the purpose of this is that if this condition is true then it will render the contents of the template tag it doesn't render the template tag itself which saves us from having multiple um, multiple divs um, essentially with that condition so in fact you can do the same for here as well because um, you can see that we're replicating card body this card body um, twice this card body div twice um, but i'll leave that to you to to do that um, you can essentially do this in this style okay so let me save this and check the console I've realized there was an error um, related to the way we were using ng-if on templates. So for template tags, uh, you use the attribute binding syntax, which means instead of using this asterisk, um, you wrap it in these square brackets. And that should do, that should do good. So I, I'm going to reload the page again. It should say loading bookmarks from database and we should see all of it here. And then if I delete these, then we get no bookmarks added. So that's good. All right, so let's move to Firebase now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our Firebase console and um, we need to create a project, essentially representing our um, bookmark manager project. So I'll come to create project. So after I clicked on add project, I'll give it a name. I'll call it bookmark manager. And then I'll leave everything else as is and I'll take this one and then I'll create the project. Once our project is ready, we'll continue. And it'll take us to the project overview dashboard. And essentially what we want to do is to come down here and go to Cloud Firestore. Or we could just click on database here. And it's loading. Once it's loaded, we're going to create a new database and we'll start our database in test mode. Although in a production app, you probably don't want to do test mode, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we'll do test mode. And now we'll add a collection. We'll call it bookmarks. And then we can give it a document ID, but I'll just leave that blank. So that is an auto-generated ID for us. And then we'll add in our first entry. So our first entry, um, we'll take in a field called title and the value would be creative bracket. So this, this is essentially um, the field representing our model. And then we'll add a new field description, go to that resource blog for that tutorials. And then we'll add a URL and let's save so this should add one entry to our collection all right so we got that here and now let's try and load this into our app 
the way we need to do that is we need um, to use the Firebase SDK. Fortunately, there is a package on pub called Firebase, which allows us to, which essentially wraps the Firebase JavaScript um, API with the JS interop package. So this means that we're able to use Firebase, the Firebase API in Dart. So we need to install that by adding this dependency in our pubspec file. So we'll come back to our pubspec.yaml file and then we'll add this dependency here. And once we save, you can either run pubget in the terminal or if you're using the Dart extensions for VS Code, pubget automatically gets triggered for us. So let's wait till it finishes. Well, while it's installing, actually, um, we need to do something else. So we need to copy our Firebase scripts into our index.js file. So I will just copy one of these script tags and then I'm going to come to our index.html and then I will paste it right before main.dart.js. But what we want is we want Firebase version 5.9.2, which I think that's the latest one, and we'll make it firebase.js. So I'll save that. And I'm going to restart the build because we updated our pubspec.yaml file. The build um, was terminated. So let's just run this command again. When that's ready, we'll reload the page and let's inspect our console. And yeah, we know that we have Firebase because we get this message. But I think we can also type in Firebase in our console and then we get access to the Firebase object here. Okay, cool. So let's go back to our bookmark service. And then what we need to do is we're going to integrate Firebase now. The exciting part. First, we need to import the Firebase package, uh, not Firebase IO firebase.dart so you use firebase io when running from the server side which we're not we're running on the client and then what we'll do is define a constructor for our bookmark service and in here we're going to do a couple of things so one we're going to initialize our firebase app and then we'll um, define some references to the firebase database so let me copy this and then i'll come back and I'll paste this here. So initialize app comes from firebase.dart. And then with these database references, I am going to define these as private variables for our service, which means that in here we'll do that and we'll do this instead. So essentially the reference um, we're going to access in our Firebase database is our bookmarks which is what we called the collection. So now what we need is the correct information and we get that from our Firebase dashboard. And then we're going to click on the settings icon by our project overview and then we'll go to our project settings. And then what we'll do is come over here under your apps and then we'll click on this which is the web app, which once it's loaded, it will give us the configuration we need. So let's copy all of this. We'll come back here and we'll paste all this stuff here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we don't need this anymore. We're going to amend our get bookmarks method to pull information from our Firebase database. Let's start by creating a list of bookmarks and then we'll call it bookmarks so it'll be empty and then what we need to do is to create a query event um, which is essentially an event listener on our firebase database so we will use a sync await syntax so let's mark this with a sync and we're going to await and then we'll get our reference our database reference and then we listen for the value event so the reason why we need to listen once is um, we only need this to happen on page load else if we use on that means any change we make um, this would run so we, we literally just need it to happen once and then we we kill it okay so 
after our query event what we need is um, a database snapshot a data snapshot and then um, I'll just call it snapshot and then what we want is our snapshot from our query event and once we get our snapshot we can um, get our value from our snapshot by um, calling the val method so let's in fact um, log this out into into our console I uh, will import the HTML library and then I'll do window console log DM data so let's save this and this will break now which is expected so that's fine um, so let's look at our console okay so we're getting a permission problem we need to return to our firebase console and come to our database and what we're going to do is um, to define some rules for the database then we'll switch our database to real-time database which is what we should have done at the beginning so we will recreate essentially um, the collection that we did for our cloud firestore we'll, we'll use real-time database instead um, to do that so we'll call it our bookmarks then we'll add that to our database and we need to set our rules to enable read and write access to our database to this real-time database so set that to true and we set that to true again for production you don't want to do this you want to add a bit more logic to validate requests coming in and let's publish okay rules published and now let's come back to our file here we are getting results from the database we are getting our entry from the database here so oh yes we are getting this error because we are um, invoking this method in our scaffolding in our bookmark scaffold component which of course we've changed this now so at the moment it's returning nothing which is why this exception is happening um, so if i do something i don't know along the lines of that that should get rid of the error yep that gets rid of the error so right now what we need to do is to put this information um, into our bookmark model so let's do that now we are going to loop over our bm data so this is essentially a map which is got for the key names is our id and then for the value is a map object containing our title description and url so we'll loop over our map using for each and then we'll take the key and then the value and then we'll create details object whereby in there we'll cast the value as a map of string dynamic and then we will add the details to our bookmarks so we'll create a new bookmark object and then in there we will extract the title description and our url and then lastly we need to return our bookmarks so let's test this out okay cool there we go got our bookmark loaded but then it jumps straight into edit mode which i believe is because edit by default is set to true so let's set edit to false and try again okay and there we have it all right so i want to refactor this piece of logic the way we're going to do that is we're going to come to our bookmark model 